he fired his surplus workers and invited foreign investment. But then something he didn't expect uh, happened. His workers, who no longer had a job, were pretty upset. So they came back and they killed him. And as a result, um, this whole sort of privatization scheme collapsed. And when the American government realized this was happening, they put all their privatization plans on hold. The next thing that happened was they realized that a lot of these laws they'd enacted in order to allow everything to be privatized, Paul Bremer suggested, actually passed a resolution that would, um, or an executive order that would have allowed the privatization of every, every sector, was basically um, uh, discovered to be illegal under international law. Now, this was way back in December. Uh, subsequently, in March and April, because of the incredibly uh, um, bad judgment and bad planning on parts of the military, as the resistance uh, started to rise, the security situation deteriorated, and as a result, nobody uh, wants to go into Iraq to set up a business because it's too dangerous and there's no guarantee that their business will continue to exist. That's not to say that people don't work in Iraq. Plenty of companies work in Iraq, but only if they have um, uh, money from the U.S. government or they have guarantees that their businesses will not be, exp um, uh, will not be nationalized in the future or, or, or ransacked. And that again, once again, mostly comes from foreign governments. What's happening is that somebody needs to ensure uh, these companies to go, to go into a very risky situation. So the, the U.S. Import-Export Bank is being presented, um, being put forward as the insurer of last resort, which means that the, uh, the, 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 they, they would offer insurance to, say, a Bechtel to come in and, um, and, and, and privatize the, the water in Iraq. Uh, but then if a new Iraqi government then decides to renationalize that asset, it would be the U.S. taxpayers, not Bechtel, that would be on the hook. So the U.S. taxpayers not only pay with their $87 billion uh, in terms of bankrolling this reconstruction boondoggle, but they will then have to potentially pay again when it becomes clear that these contracts were illegal to begin with. You see a lot of propaganda in the, in the, in the U.S. media. A lot of talk about democracy and new interim constitution, the governing council, how people uh, are welcoming the U.S. troops. This is all, this is all false. Uh, the union of the unemployed was an answer to the situation. And, and, it, and it was brought up from among the ranks of unemployed workers. The main demand of the union of the unemployed was to provide unemployment benefit to the work to the unemployed workers that's the only that's the only demand of course we we demanded the, jo the, the immediate providing of jobs to the Iraqi workers three out of four Iraqis according to the International Monetary Fund don't have a job this is a huge huge problem and is showing a lot of resentment. The fact that people see these American occupiers, the soldiers, and they also see foreign workers coming and doing those jobs that they would like to do. And, and a lot of things that people are being imported for, whether it's truck driving or cooking, are jobs that people in any country can do, and most certainly they can do in Iraq. Iraq has very sophisticated doctors and civil engineers too. Many of those people were fired because they were seen to be Ba'athist. Now given the 10% of the population was a member of the Ba'ath Party, um, it, was, uh, it has created many problems, especially since in order to rise within the ranks, you had to be a member of the Ba'ath Party. As a result, every experienced doctor, uh, teacher, engineer um, is now out of work. And as a result, things are not functioning very well because most people have no idea where the, uh, the equipment is or the services are. Since the 40s, the working movement in Iraq have been active. Thousands get to the streets. Thousands... Uh, uh, clash with the police. Many hundreds of workers have, have been martyrs to the working class movement in Iraq. So these achievements are not Saddam's achievements. These achievements are the workers' achievements. Now they are, they are attacking these achievements uh, with, the, with the help of the U.S., with the help of Paul Bremer. They want to falsify the cause of Iraqi workers. But they don't know that there are independent workers who would organize their own workers and we succeeded in that. This uh, demonstration uh, was organized by the UUI 
uh, union of unemployed in Iraq. It started at the headquarter of the union, which is which was at the end of Rashid Street, uh, near Tahrir Square. Uh, it crossed the bridge, Al Jamhuria Bridge, and approached the CPA headquarters, which was the uh, presidential palace of Qasr al-Jamhuri. Uh, and, uh, and there we uh, shouted slogans that demanded jobs or uh, social benefits for all unemployed people in Iraq. A lot of the services have not been fully restored. So in Baghdad, 50% of the time, there's no electricity. Now, Iraq was a very modern economy with you know, completely functional electricity before the uh, first Gulf War with good hospitals, good education system, and all of this was pretty much free. Um, so most of the stuff no longer functions. The sewage plants that were bombed by the Americans in the first Gulf War continue uh, to be inoperable, and therefore the water for Iraqis is polluted. So that's uh, a major deterioration in the quality of life. Um, children's playgrounds are empty and, and, and abandoned. Uh, the main park in, in Baghdad is unused. Even under Saddam Hussein's time, people went and played there, uh, and, and that no longer happens. The, the, the restaurants and the cafes along the river, those have closed down, partly because the Americans have barricaded those areas because they're worried about you know, attacks from, uh, from the river, uh, partly because you know, people really don't want to go out. The movie theaters are pretty much, if not entirely, shut down. So the quality of life has definitely deteriorated, especially where, you know, public life, just, just community life is concerned, those things have disappeared. Under Saddam and his clique, there were a few people who were beneficiaries. And the majority of Iraqis simply were spectators. We are creating now the same circumstance. The Iraqi public at large are spectators. There is a small clique who are beneficiaries along with the uh, international companies. So what, the, where is the real change uh, in terms of economics? Where is the real change? If the peace dividend is going to accrue to international companies, then I'm sorry to say this is a formula uh, which is unfair, and I think in the long run it's a formula for disaster. وَمَا لِي